Good morning, friends, and welcome to volume two of my diary. It is a little bit in the afternoon and I am just getting dinner in the crock pot for tonight. And we're gonna have some easy peasy chili. And today we're gonna talk about my word for the year, which just so happens to be on my sweatshirt. But yeah, let's get dinner going because then I can take that off my list of things. We are just having a very easy high protein dinner tonight. So I browned some turkey with salt, with salt, pepper, onion powder, and garlic powder. To that, I'm just going to add two cans of crushed tomatoes. I'm also going to add some frozen corn, but that will be like right before, about 20 minutes before I serve it. So two cans of crushed tomatoes, a can of green chilies, And then a can of dark red kidney beans. Drain and rinse. I'm just gonna give that all a quick stir to combine. And then today, I'm just being lazy and I'm using a chili McCormick's mix. Normally I would do like chili, chili powder and kind of make my own, but you know, some days you just want easy. So I'm just gonna add that in. Stir that in and I'm setting this on high because it's already noon and I'm going to Forget about it. I love nothing more than when a dinner comes together in like 15 minutes. I Love nothing more than like an easy morning and that's exactly what I've had today So I woke up I did my light mask my skincare and Read a little bit of my book caught up on some TV Something about like traveling, it's just like taking me a while to get like back into it um, and settle in. So I'm doing all my laundry and catching up on all my laundry state, but I have to talk about the sweatshirt. So I pick a word every year, and this year my word is reinvent. The, by definition, reinvent means to change so much it appears to be new. Now, does every aspect of my life need to be reinvented? Absolutely not. There are many things I'm happy with, but there are definitely aspects that by the end of this year, so over small changes, I want them to appear to be new. So that's my word for this year. I found on Etsy a woman who made this sweatshirt. So you could customize the word. And then on the sleeve, it says 2024 word of the year. I love it so much. So this is like my go-to sweatshirt. You'll probably see it a lot. I'm also super excited that so many of you loved the format. They are going to be really simple some days. Some days they'll just be that diary entry. Like I also said, I don't know if I'll upload every single day, but I'm going to film every day and pick up the camera at least. So there will always probably be a couple videos a week or at least one video that will encompass the week. Either way, I'm gonna be here and be far more present, but the response to video one was really incredible and exactly what I needed to like inspire and push me. So, dinner is ready. I am going to hang out with the dogs a little bit more and then get my workout in. 20 to 30 minutes, easy breezy. Once again today, my focus is tracking my food. So for breakfast this morning, I just scrambled two eggs and put it on a bed of arugula and spinach with some hot sauce and that was breakfast. Not really ready for lunch yet, maybe like one o'clock-ish, but yeah, skin is looking good though. I really like that light mask. I just got some new bedding delivered today. It is from Bull and & Branch, and it is a duvet cover and pillowcases. So lucky to have gotten this comes with all the care instructions. The only thing I'm concerned about is I thought it was going to be blue and it's reading a little green. So I don't know if it will really go with our rug in our bedroom because it's definitely more blue, but I am gonna get it unbagged and go up and see what I think. I'll probably just take a sham up to see 
if it works. It feels amazing. That's a good thing. Like, it is so soft. Let's see. I definitely think it is reading way too green. But once again, this bedroom, this dining room light is not the best one to judge. So I'm just going to pull out one of the shams before I like undo the whole thing. So hopefully, normally you can locate it. Oh, there I got one. I'm going to pull out one of the shams. All right, let me run one of these up and see. They feel really nice. I just don't think the color is exactly what I want. I don't know how I'm feeling. I feel like it might be too green, but I feel like I can't tell with just the shams. So I'm going to go grab the, um, I'm gonna go grab the comforter and just put it on and see what I think. But I do think it's reading a little too green. I mean, we never have that overhead light on unless like we're folding laundry or doing something. I think that, I'm stuffy again. Yeah, I think I like it. This light is just so bright and it's such a warm light that in the natural light it looks. Yeah, I don't mind it. It feels so good. Obviously it needs like steamed and all those things to get the wrinkles out, but I think I really like it. Yeah, I think we're gonna go with it. I just have to get it all pressed and steamed and things. Today has been a very easy day and it's exactly what I want the start of this new year to feel like. I'm trying to just like listen to my body and some things that I'm thinking about as I go into work next week where my schedule completely shifts and changes is that I really wanna work out when my body tells me I wanna work out and thinking about some days I'm gonna wake up really early, ready to go, and I'll do it in the morning, but also knowing that there are some days where it's okay to do it at the end of the day as well, and just kind of listening to where I wanna go. Today, after I film and complete today's entry, I am going to do a couple things. I'm gonna try Pevolve, something I'm really excited about. It is supposed to be like lower impact working out, but really good workouts nonetheless. So excited to try that today and then probably do like a 15 or 20 minute walk on an incline on my treadmill and call it a day. Eating today has been really mindful. I had some leftovers from dinner, so some like very lean pork and some sauerkraut. And for breakfast I had the scrambled eggs that I mentioned earlier. And I had a late, late lunch, so I'll probably have like a very light dinner and Stephen can enjoy the chili, and then I know that it's there tomorrow as well, and I can have that as one of my, um, I can have that for lunch tomorrow. But really thinking about listening to my body and just being easy. And like I said, making no big crazy changes like I would normally do. Normally I would start by restricting something and working out for an hour to an hour and a half every day. So then when you fall off of this thing that you created that was unattainable or unsustainable at any rate, you feel defeated, which then sets you back even further. But by making these like small changes and putting less pressure on myself and not doing things that are completely unrealistic, I know that like the maintenance of it will become much easier. It's similar to what I'm doing with these vlogs and videos. Like I said, I don't know what the upload schedule will be. Maybe it will be every day because they are formatted in a way that allows for that. But maybe I just do it every other day or once a week as we go. But what I do know is I'll film every single day and then just put them together when it feels right. And right now, daily feels cool because I've been in the habit of Vlogmas and it, it it is kind of part of the routine right now. When I think about my word for the year, reinvent, to change, 
to a point where it feels new. The way I'm going into this new year feels like a reinvention because normally it would be unrealistic and unsustainable versions of what I think I want that will never last. So like I said, it's the consistency of the small things over a long period of time that will yield the results that you want, not a really great week. Which probably wasn't that great because you were probably miserable because you created such an unsustainable vision for it all. Either way, I've been really happy with these first two days. And I have also been super excited to see you guys loving this format. Let's go to today's prompt because I'm excited about it. Also, I loved reading everyone's responses. And I think it becomes such a great place of encouragement and positivity and community building to go through and read people's. I cannot possibly reply to all of them, but they were fantastic. And for those who reached out over on Instagram because you didn't want to share one in a public forum, which I totally respect and get, I loved being able to connect with you over there. Um, I was able to connect with several, several of you, which just felt really great. And then for those who are just writing it privately, um, I think that's amazing too. There might be a day where I hit a prompt where I'm like, you know what, I'm not sharing this on the internet. I'm gonna write it down in my journal. Uh, but very, very excited about today's prompt. And today's prompt is, how is the way you were raised helping you today? My parents have set great examples. I think one thing that my parents have instilled with me at a very early age is you work hard and you do the job you've been asked to do. I appreciate my parents so much. My dad and my mom are the hardest working people. And I don't just mean in a, like, a work setting. My parents have worked tirelessly their entire life. We weren't raised with a lot, but everything we had was maintained and fixed. And my mom kept a spotless house and decorated and made things as best as she could with what she had. And I think that's what I appreciate and it has impacted me so much. I believe and working really, really hard for the things that you have in your life. And then when you get those things to really take care of them and to really appreciate and value them. Steven is a person that is super similar. He will fix something. If it is broken, him and I find a way to fix it uh, before we would ever just replace it. Uh, I think I also walk around my home with like a very big sense of gratitude and appreciation for what I have and know that I want to take really good care of it because of that. I think the other thing my parents have just raised me with, besides just like working hard and taking care of stuff, is to really prioritize family. I have a tough situation where I don't live close to my family. My sister lives in North Carolina. My parents live several, several hours away. It's hard for us to be together physically all the time. It's a lot of traveling for my parents to have your kids split up so much. Um, but I think we do a really good job as a family of just like always staying in touch with each other. My sister and I just like made a commitment that like every day we have some sort of touch point with one another. And it has been feeling really, really good. And my mom and I and dad, we talk all the time. If someone asked this on Instagram, like how do you how do you maintain like a close-knit family when you live far apart? I think you have a set time where you always talk. Like so Sundays are always a time that I FaceTime or call my mom and dad and I talk to both of them. I think that is just like one time that always happens. But then there are multiple times throughout the week where I'm just like shooting them texts and keeping them up to date with just everything. And I think that's the way you fill the distance close a little bit. I reach out to my mom often, a couple times a month, just how to cook something. And I think that's the way you keep it going. And I cherish all of the time that we have together. I would say when you live far apart from your family, you don't realize how much you miss them until you're all together and then have to like go apart again. That's when it's the toughest. I feel like when I have a stretch where we're a little bit more distant, um, physically, not uh, not like talking or conversation wise, and that, that makes that distance a little bit easier. It's the times that we're together and then have to go apart that are really hard because when we're together, we do nothing but laugh and have like the best of times. 
but I think my parents taught me that family is really important as I go into 2024, being really unapologetic with my family time and prioritizing that is actually something that I'm really focused on and something that's really important to me. When I think about being raised and how it has made me who I am or aspects of my life better, it's easy to talk about our parents and my parents are phenomenal and I would give nothing um, for anything different in my childhood. Even the really tough parts, the way my parents showed up for me, I went through really bad bullying. Obviously coming out was tough and the way my parents continued to show up has shown me like how you show up for people that you care about and you love beyond just your family but your friends as well. Um, you show up for people when they need you. But I cannot talk about how being raised um, has impacted me as an adult without talking about my grandmother. My grandma, my mom's mom, uh, was probably one of the biggest driving forces in my life and has made me who I am. Not just like, once again, a hard worker, but I do get my sense of worrying from her. She was a worrier, so I think I picked up a little bit of that um, from her, but my love of books, my love of cooking, my love for making my home beautiful, keeping things clean and organized. Those are all things that were instilled by my grandmother. And I think the other thing is my grandmother was a woman of great faith, um, as are my parents and my sister. And I think they have all been great examples of what it means to have strong beliefs and strong values and strong faith. And I think that is what gives you peace as you get older and you watch people around you get older is knowing where their heart is and where their faith lies. And I think that gives you some peace. I think I have struggled since 2016 and losing my grandmother. Um, but I think knowing her faith and knowing who she was and what she believed in um, and her being such a woman of God has given me like a like peace around it. I don't think I could ever get over it um, and there's probably not a day since 2016 that I don't think of her um, but she has made me who I am and once again so many of the things that I do in my life I like take pause and I'm like well this is grandma <laughs> like I have become her and there are just like certain things or things that I'll say or things that I will think that are directly tied to her. Um, so I wouldn't be able to talk about those things. But like my love of books and Anne of Green Gables and Dolly Parton and singing and music and just everything has been shaped by my grandmother and my parents. So yeah, I think, I think some would look back at my childhood and think it was really tough or that we didn't have much or that I had like a really tough experience in school from about second grade to mm, sophomore, junior year of high school. Like we're pretty, pretty terrible. Um, but I wouldn't trade it for the world because I always came home to like the best family. Um, and it was really special. And I think all of that lived experience has led me to where I'm at right now in my life and hopefully will lead me to other great successes. I think what they've instilled lastly, um, and most importantly, all of them combined is like just to believe how, believe in your talent and believe in yourself and stop settling because you have one life to live and it should be you going after everything that you dream of. There's nothing I've ever told my parents that they didn't think or support me 100% and just say like, we'll go for it, do it. And I think that's super important. This was such a nice cathartic conversation because it's stuff that you don't always think about or reflect upon and that's what I'm excited about these moments. All right, I hope you have had a wonderful day. The rest of my day is going to be working out, getting that bedding squared away, getting all my laundry put away from Vegas and spending some time relaxing. Take care of yourself, take care of others, be kind. Kindness is free. Give it to everyone. Until next time.